thank you for the best session so far by the Holy Spirit guide us lead us into higher dimensions in serving you we are grateful now I want everyone to just pray for the spirit of revelation God give me the spirit of revelation revelation and wisdom the spirit of revelation Grant us the Give spirit the of spirit revelation. Of and revelation. Give us the spirit of revelation. The spirit of wisdom and 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 revelation. Grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Malinde Mashi Parindere Mose. Oh, yes. Epala Baba. Ranta Mashi Bolo Mose. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lemba Ma. Mandalandaria. Epale Mashi Panto City Ribahaya. Maranda. In the name of Jesus. The spirit of revelation. The spirit of wisdom. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lepa haya. Lento shipare monde. Indi bahasi tisha. Randa maka pere mo shipaka mina la ba. Loma sombare ne. Limbande zima haya. Father, thank you for this great opportunity. Yes, Lord that you give to us for mountain-like churches. Yes. We are grateful for your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Right. How many have been able to visit the library of the anointing? Very few of you have been able to do that. All right. Now, Tonight, I want to share with you a little about the anointing. And um, I want to share with you about the miracle anointing. Miracle anointing will amplify and expand your ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Um, number one, miracles and manifestations of the spirit of the anointing will help you to reach the world. Amen. For Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, number two, miracles and manifestations of the Spirit will cause you to come out of obscurity. Obscurity means you are hidden in a corner. Amen. And God is going to help you to come out of every corner that you are found in. Now, in Mark chapter 1, the Bible says, and when the spirit, unclean spirit, had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him and they were all amazed insomuch that they 
questioned amongst themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he even commandeth the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of um, James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick, and he came and took hold of her and lift her, lifted her up. And immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto him. And at even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. Amen. Now, this anointing that we are seeking for to be respected, right? It is important that you and I see the weapons and the equipment that God has sent us out with. Amen. Look at verse 28. It says, immediately his fame spread. His fame did what? Spread. His fame spread throughout all the region round about Galilee. Okay? And your fame is going to spread all around wherever you are located. Amen. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Amen. So miracles, the miracle anointing, that's what I'm talking about. The miracle anointing is going to keep you and cause you to come out of obscurity because everyone starts his ministry not as a mountain or as a mountain like church which you cannot ignore you know even if you don't like africa you can't ignore mount kilimanjaro it's there <laughs> and it's higher than the highest mountain in europe so i mean you can't ignore mountains and you'll never be ignored after today. Amen. Amen. So, miracles and uh, the manifestations of the power of God are going to be the weapons by which you come out of obscurity. So, everybody here, you know, as much even as we teach and preach the word of God must decide to have and to minister the healing power of God as part of your ministry. If you put that aside and you say that instead of using the power of God, I'm going to use Facebook to take me out of obscurity. Do you get what I'm saying? What it is is that then you are setting aside the method which God has chosen to bring people out of obscurity in the ministry. And I've taken a modern, uh, newfangled, new fashion idea as your mainstay to bring you out of obscurity. All right? So, 
get all excited about your new miracle ministry. Amen. 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 And I want to say to you that the prophets in we have in Ghana um, uh, many of them have come from obscurity but they are well known today. You know and many people are jealous of them. Many people are jealous of the prophets. And these prophets uh, have come out of obscurity, not by Facebook or YouTube, but by miracles and wonders and signs. Many of them without education, without the ability to speak English, without anything, the miracle ministry that they have exhibited, you get it, has taken them, amplified their ministries and taken them into a level of prominence which very few of us here can boast of. In fact, if today you want to count the influence of the church, you see, you may start from the Orthodox and the older fathers. Then you come to the Pentecostals, which are the people like the Pentecost Church, Apostolic Church, Assemblies of God, and so on. They are the Pentecostals. Then you come to the Charismatics, who cannot also be ignored. It's also a, a quite a large body. Now, after that, you have the prophets. And you can't ignore them. <laughs> Their churches are bigger. They are following in spite of every insult, every bad thing that is said about them. They are this, they are this, they are this, they are this, they are that, they are that. They are, you can't ignore their influence and their presence in the system. You know, and I want to say that um, instead of having a natural, instant rejection of miraculous and fantastic things, you know, we should rather have a, an attitude of, I mean, is that not what we hope for? Look, I would love to tell your car number right now. I wish I could. And I'm, I'm going to try all my life to be telling people's car numbers until it works. I don't know if it will ever work. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, is this not what you pray for? Is it not what we say, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and fantastic things? And you see, you must realize that when charismatic churches came on the scene, I mean, we were insulted to the nonsense degree. We were called whatever. I remember one pastor, he was so angry. He preached a message and really faced the whole world. And he said that he's saying it because they called us mushroom churches. So he's also saying that they are dead churches. <laughs> hey, he was very angry. You get it? So it's like anytime there's a new thing, those who've been there before become Pharisees, become scribes, and we have negative things to say about the new people that seem to be attracting more people than whoever you, if you were there before. So you find the standard rhetoric or the standard way of talking of pastors is negative about prophets. Yes. And they may have excesses, but you also have excesses. And they may have mistakes, but you also have mistakes. Oh, I lie. You don't have mistakes, you see. Stand up if you don't have mistakes. Stand up. You stand. 
You change your mind. What I'm saying is that the method of coming out of obscurity is miracles. Yes. The method of coming out of obscurity is miracles. It's not Facebook. It's not uh, what do you call handbills? Flyers. No. It's not posters. It's not billboards. You get it? It's not YouTube. It's miracles. It's miracle power. Yeah. I'm talking about ministry. This conference is about ministry. If you are not interested in ministry, you shouldn't have come. Amen. The, the method coming out of obscurity, a hole, a corner, is miracle ministry. Yes. You must believe in miracle ministry to bring you out of obscurity. If I, I can say one thing that uh, has helped me to come out of obscurity was developing the miracle anointing. Oh, yes. Because, you see, if you travel, you, 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 when you start traveling, you realize that every pastor is just basically a teacher. He's like a speaker. So all the international conferences, we have what we call speakers. Who are the speakers? Yeah. And they just speak. <laughs> so this one will speak, this one will speak, this one will speak, this one will speak, this one will speak. And that's if you can have a way of speaking and you have a very, you know, nice way of speaking and say certain wise things and they can cut one minute for it and then they post it. And then it's like, wow, look at what this person said. Do you see? But truly coming out of obscurity in the ministry has always been God's way, which is the supernatural miracle manifestation. Now, when God led me to the supernatural and the miracle, I'm talking of miracle healing, for the first time, I had something extra to offer when I was invited somewhere. Yes. Now, the miracle ministry, if you stand back and you watch, you'll see that. You see, that is where your human power ends. And it's either God is there or it's not there. And I remember one time in Florida, I was at uh, Benny Hinn Crusade in Florida. And um, I, I, I was privileged to sit with the pastors on stage. You know, and after I also saw the pastors around and on, I realized that all the pastors were afraid of Benny Hinn. Yes, all of them. Because they are only speakers. But he is miracle man. Yes. It's miracle man. Yeah. That, that's the difference. That's the difference. Yeah, everybody is a speaker. Like they speak, they share, they, 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 they speak whatever. But Benihin was a miracle man. So I, I noticed, I saw all the American pastors were afraid of him. Yeah, they were all afraid of him. They don't, they don't understand him. I'm sure they all criticize him. They say things about him. Many, whatever, and so on. But here the man has come. <laughs> and he's not only going to be a speaker. He's going to pray for every type of sickness. <laughs> There's nothing like miracle anointing that changes uh, the nature of the ministry. Yes. So, um, all the anointing that we are seeking, because I believe that 
mountain-like churches. You see, uh, we are talking of something unusual, something mighty, and something great. You have to think of miracle anointing. Yes. And you have to determine to not simply be a speaker. Mm. Your teachings will not be so different from other teachings. What are the possible points you can have? <laughs> eh? your, your teachings will not be so different. Like, what are, even if you have my book, I've given you my books. You have them, the points are there. It will be similar. If you are going to use my book. The miracle ministry was the method. Look at verse 28. Was the method which brought Jesus out. It says, and immediately, immediately, his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. Yes, immediately, immediately. So, dear pastor, I am telling you, okay, that instead of criticizing things which you don't, you don't fully get, never, never criticize. Don't criticize. Don't criticize. I remember when T.B. Joshua came on the scene, people said this, this, that. Because initially, the one miracle that you are seeing now, that you see in the recent time, that was not even how the miracles were before. Before, it was, uh, you will see something like the person's leg is cut open. Then it will close during the miracle service. So immediately I had criticism like, oh, this man is a false one. And I said, oh, why is that the first one? Are we not all praying for such thing that you see something that is open and it will close? Is that not what we are praying for? How is that the first response from you? That that is false. I thought this was what we were praying for. So if somebody rises up and seems to have it. I'm not saying whether it's false or true. But I'm just saying why is that the first response to something wonderful that we see? Your first reaction. Eh? It means your first reaction is just envy. Wow. Now, let's look at the definition of envy. Wow. Okay? Envy instead of miracles. Envy. Do you, do you people have a dictionary there? Envy is a feeling of dissatisfaction and unhappiness about someone else's success, someone else's achievement, or someone else's advancement. Yes. It's a negative feeling. It's not a feeling to have what the person has. So if, for instance, T.B. Joshua has miracles over there, and, and, you, and you say you are envying him, it doesn't mean that you want to have his miracles. No, no, no. It's not that. You see, that's what we think. Jealousy or envy is like, I want what you have. No, 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 no. It's that you have a negative feeling towards somebody. Do you see the satisfaction, discontentment because of the person's apparent advancement or possessions or achievements? It disturbs you. Why should things that are wonderful disturb you? Because you are full of envy. And you have envy instead of miracles. Huh? It is a painful or resentful awareness of an advantage enjoyed by another person. A painful or resentful awareness of an advantage enjoyed by another, joined with a desire to possess the same advantage. <laughs> yes. A painful or resentful awareness. So when you become aware, that's why many people say, hey, don't show, don't let anybody come. Don't let them see. Hey, they shouldn't see that you have this. People shouldn't see that because it is a painful awareness. The awareness is painful and the awareness is resentful. It's too painful for you to see someone advancing like that. 
Yes. And so when, when you see someone apparently having a miracle, oh, these are not miracles. These are not miracles. Oh, what? These are not miracles. And you hear the comments. Tell him, tell him. Dr. Wormos, tell him to come here. I, you know, I got a message from a doctor. Tell him to come here. We are here. This is the hospital. He should come and heal here. He knows the way here. Tell him to come here and do the healing here in the hospital. It's a painful awareness. <laughs> Resentful awareness and painful awareness <laughs> of somebody's advantage. <laughs> And do you know that many times in the Bible, it says that the Pharisees envied Jesus. That was one thing. Like Once he came, there were miracles. People were following him. They envied him. At first, I was thinking, I, I never understood that. Why would the Pharisees envy Jesus? And the Bible says he was crucified because they envied him. And I was thinking that, are you sure the Pharisees wanted to be like Jesus? Are you sure they wanted to be rabbis and be going around healing? No! 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 The, the awareness of a great person who speaks and everybody is listening to him was painful. It was a resentful awareness. And he says, Matthew 27, for he knew, he knew, that is, uh, go to verse, the, the verse before that, verse 17. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom do you want me to release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? Do you see? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. He knew that the whole case was a case of envy. There are many cases, the whole case is envy. The whole case is a painful awareness. Yes, it's a painful awareness. Yes. Recently, when we had these people talking, I said, look, those who don't like you already, do you see, yeah. the, the case has just made them come out. Yeah. Yeah. It has exposed them. It has exposed all the people who were already somewhere. Anybody who loves you will not be changed by such things. It was, it was rather an exposure of hatred and of people who are already feeling resentment and pain. Their skin is paining them. Uh, uh, skin is paining them. So, I beg you, anything you criticize will never come near you. If you criticize it, it will go away from you. Because criticism is a type of attack. And when you attack, it doesn't come near you. Yes. So, when it comes to the miracle anointing, don't attack. Once you see a miracle, yeah, I, am, I agree that they are false. They are false miracles. Yes. Yes. You know, one day I heard that uh, I had gone to India to get powers. Yes. You know, and I was surprised. I had not been to India before, but I had heard that I have been to India and I've come back. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. And then, one day I saw one pastor who had a lot of church members, like a large mega church, and then I was told that they buried, you know, and, and they buried uh, 11 cows or so, or a number of cows, and then they became worms. You know, the worms. And the worms are the members. Uh, you see, what are these stories? What are these stories? What are all these? How does it help? What are fantastic stories are these? The worms are the members. Uh, the worms were plenty and those were the members. Uh, it's a painful awareness. It's a very resentful awareness. So from today, I beg you, don't criticize any prophet. Don't be against any miracle. When you hear miracle, just say, look, leave it to God. If it's of God, it will stand. If it's not of God, it will go away. Do you understand? That's all. Just leave everything. Leave this thing to God. And, and rather, 
Pray that your miracle ministry will really come alive. Yes. You know, one time I, 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 I was watching somebody on television, you know, and uh, he said to someone, count my steps. Count my steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then count my steps again. One, two, three, four. Have you counted it? Then count my steps again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then count my steps again. Then one, two. What is that? Seven, six, or seven, six, four, two. He said, that's your pin number. Is it not your pin number? He said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's your pin number. Hey! <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> yes. You see, when you see something like that, it shouldn't pain you. Uh, you should pray for it. That, Lord, give me such a wonderful, wonderful miracle, grace, and gift. I also want to see something like this in my life and my ministry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I was watching, I was watching on television. Live. Yes. He said, this is your pin number. I said, it's true, it's my pin number. I said, yes. Yeah. So, I, 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 when I saw, all, all I said, Jesus, Jesus, let me see such things in my life. Jesus, let me see such things in my life and my ministry. That's all I'm saying. Give me some of these things. <laughs> yes, that's all. That's all. And not immediately you start, oh, he's a liar. He has told, the, he has got the pin number before he started the service. It's here, it's... <laughs> He said, he's wearing a earphone. <laughs> hey. That is my when I say God. What? I pray for this. I pray for this. Yes. I pray for this. And you'll be surprised. They are also praying for what I have. Yes. They are also praying that they can teach the word. They are also praying that they can plant churches. They are also praying that they can preach in so many places and do so many. They are also praying for it. Yes. Yeah. John Wesley didn't have any word of knowledge or anything like that. But look at the church that he's left behind on this earth. Yeah. Yes. So, for me, my response is, Lord, give me some. Give me some. Yes. Give me some. When I close my eyes, let me see numbers. Yes. <laughs> Your eyes are opening today in the name of Jesus. Your eyes are opening. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's continue. Now, miracles and manifestations, miracle anointing is going to make your ministry attract the broken hearted. Yes. Attract the broken hearted. Amen. Yes. Now, many, many people are going to come to you Amen. Luke 4, 18. Jesus Christ started with this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. 
to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. Amen. Now, many miracles are designed. Beautiful. Many miracle ministry are designed to make you relevant. Amen. To, re to be relevant means to become important. So number four, miracle anointing is going to make you relevant to the world. Relevant. Relevant. You have something to offer. Amen. So expect, all right, expect the broken hearted to come towards you once your miracle ministry is activated in your corner, wherever you are. Everyone here who desires to be in the ministry, remember that Luke 4, 18 was Jesus Christ's first sermon. First ever. And his first sermon was this. This is just after the temptation. All right? And after he was anointed, this was his first message. And when Kenneth Hagin had a vision of Jesus, Jesus told him that that message, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, okay, was not just his first message, but it was the first message he preached everywhere he went. That's what the Lord told him. It wasn't just his first message, but everywhere he went, that was the first thing he preached. That the spirit of the Lord is upon me, which is about the anointing. Because he has anointed me to heal, to preach. Why he's here. And then he told Kenneth Hagin that when you go, tell the people that I gave you an anointing for miracles, for healing. And if you tell them and they believe, then the, the anointing will work. Yes. He said, when you are talking to the people, tell them that I gave you, I appeared to you, and I gave you this thing. Tell them, tell them what happened. And tell them I put the anointing in your hand. And if they believe, the anointing will work. If they don't believe, it will not work. Yeah. Now, the commonest commodity in the human world is the broken heart. Yes. The commonest commodity is the broken heart. Once you have something for the broken heart, eh, the whole world will be coming to see you. Yes. Because the whole world it's full of disappointment. It's full of futility. It's full of disillusionment. And it's full of discouragement. He says, you will heal the broken hearted. So, instead of depending on Facebook to change your ministry and bring a lot of people Change to the power of God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It, it has helped. You see, when God was leading me into the miracle ministry, I was basically a speaker. And I will go to somewhere by invitation as a speaker. Or a friend will invite me and I go. We're exchanging friendships. But when the Lord anointed me, okay, now suddenly it's like a new avenue became available to me. Yeah. Suddenly I was not just a speaker, but miracles were happening. And I was also a preacher. So miracles were happening. I first started to do miracles in my own church. And a prophet is not without on except in his own church. So in my own church, although I saw miracles, they were limited miracles. You know, there are some companies called something limited. Uh -huh. Anointing limited, miracle limited, everything limited when you are in your own house. Yes. But I was determined because this was my faith that miracle anointing will take you out. And that is the way. 
That is the way. Even though I will teach you to learn how to be a very good preacher, I will teach you to depend on power and the miracle power of God. A miracle to, you must have a supernatural aspect in the ministry. There must be the supernatural. When, when there's chapel, they call themselves the home of signs and wonders. The home of signs and wonders. Yes. You must believe in supernatural. You know, there are some other books which have the stories and different stories in addition to the stories we have in the Bible. I'm surprised that people will say that these things are not true. For Moses to see a burning bush and go and a voice will come out of it, is it not unusual? Is it not supernatural? It's completely out of the ordinary. And that's the basis of Moses' ministry. And many, many other stories exist about Moses, about Jesus, and so on. I'm surprised somebody would even say that such things are not true. Because the Bible is full of fantastic stories. Yes. Why will you not believe in the supernatural? That's what, that is one of the things that draws the broken hearted. The disappointed. I was, I was watching one time in uh, Bishop Oede Post Church. He was uh, taking a testimony and there was a lady who had been caught by somebody who was taking them in a car and they took them to um, a place. They captured them. When they got there, tied them when they got there, there were 17 other people who had also been brought there and who had been tied. Yes. And this guy, he did not believe, he did not like Winners Chapel, you know, but I think his wife or something, I don't know, if there's a, I'm not giving the details correctly, but the wife or somebody had believed like the church or whatever. So when they then took the luggage, you see, to take the things out, then they saw a handbills of the of a program of Winners Chapel. <laughs> they saw handbills, handbills of a program. And Bishop Odepo's picture, of course, was a part of the handbills. And then inside the picture. He started to speak in tongues. And the bill, the handbill started to speak in tongues. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, real life. The handbill, the preacher started to speak like he started to speak in tongues. And the arm robbers were, were afraid and they scattered from there. Yeah. They were afraid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> power against powers. Power against powers. Receive power against power. Yes. Yes. The handbill, he, he started to speak inside the handbill. And the people scattered. Yes. As it came out. Yes. Why, why, do, why do you not believe such things? The world is filled with disappointed people. Oh, yes. Very disappointed. And when the anointing, the miracle anointing is on your life, the miracle anointing draws people whose lives are filled with disappointment, hopelessness. What will I do next? How will things work out? What's going to be the next step? And they keep coming, and they keep coming, and they keep coming, and they come to you. Oh, yes. Don't shy away from the miracle anointing. You know, God gave me uh, a glimpse of what it is like for people you know, who are hoping for something. And what it is like when you, as the man of God, you shy away from the miracle 
anointing. It happened to me when I was in Tulsa. And uh, Kenneth Hagin was preaching. And then he decided to pray for people. And he was going down the aisle like this. He was going down. Excuse me. He was going down. And he was speaking. And I was standing there. And he would touch everybody. Touch, 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 touch. Then just when he got to where... I was getting to near where I was. He turned around and he went down this way. Yes. Yes. You know, and I, I, I said, no. I mean, he wasn't so close, but he was coming. But he changed direction. Yes. Yes. You know, and I thought to myself, look, you never know how much people want you to just pray for them. Yes. You never know how much people want. God showed me what it is like when somebody wants you to pray for the person. Yeah. Yeah, just a touch. Yes. Yes. I tell you. Sometimes at Miracle Crusades, I look at the people and I, I wonder to myself, that, what do these people believe I can do for them? I'm also just a human being. But you see, they are not looking to you. They are looking to you as an agent for something supernatural that can come to them through the power of God. Every pastor must have an outlet for miracles. You see, every organ that is not used comes into danger. Whether it's a breast, if it's not used to lactate or to breastfeed, or a womb, which is not used to give birth, or the uh, uh, testicles is not releasing the, uh, what do you call it? Whatever it has to offer. Um, huh? <laughs> Diseases, diseases come from those things. Diseases come from all those things. Yeah. If it's a breast, it's supposed to feed milk. That's why they always say, feed, do the breastfeeding. Don't not do breastfeeding. Or the womb to give birth. Or the whatever it is where it's supposed to flow. Anything that's supposed to be used. If it is not used, it, it, some, it's associated with certain problems. Yes. So you see, where the miracle organ of your ministry, which is also supposed to be used, but it's on return, so no, here we are speakers. You know, here we are teachers. Here we are ministers, we, but not a, a miracle minister. You see, there you see that there is something missing. Yes, and a, a new disease can come. Yes, from that. So every one of you must have an outlet. An outlet for the miracles. Yes, you must have an outlet for the miracle ministry of your life. Yes, the broken hearted. And, and that's why you see even people like, you'll be surprised that people like prayer meetings. Not because they, they love prayer. But it's like they see it as an effort they are making towards a problem or the issues of this life, which is the broken heartedness. Don't think of broken heart of a man and a woman, and then the woman has been left by the man. No, 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 no. Broken hearted is a disappointed heart. I'm, I'm filled with disappointment. Yes. And I tell you, no matter how young you are, no matter how low you are, what stage you are in the ministry, miracle anointing will bring you out of obscurity. Yeah. Yes. It will bring you out of obscurity. Yes. Yes. Miracle anointing will bring you out. Of, it is the Bible method. It's the Bible way to climb out and to come out of a hole. 
Yes. Don't be just a speaker. Think about all the famous speakers who seem to have something more than others. Like Reverend Istud Anaba. You see that? There's something else that he brings. It's not just coming with a seminar. It's not just a seminar. There's something else. Yes. It's the, it's the, it's the miracle path. Do you see? That is the something extra. Yes. And so when you say, oh, I'm a teacher of the word. Well, it's nice. We have a lot of teachers. But the miracle part changes. That's why Benny is different from other pastors, American pastors. There are so many American pastors. Plenty. 90, 90% of all pastors are in America. So if 90% of pastors are in America, you know, then, I mean, why, 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 why don't we know many more? We know Bonke, who had a miracle ministry. We know uh, 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 T.L. Osborne, who had a miracle ministry. We know Maurice Cerullo, who had a t- uh, miracle ministry. We know Benny Hinn, who had a miracle ministry. We know Oral Roberts, who had a miracle ministry. Who else do you know? Who else do you know? You don't know the rest of them. You don't know the ones who don't have miracle ministries. Yes. You don't know the ones who don't have miracle ministries. You only know the people who have miracle ministries. Yeah. I'm not talking about those who have Facebook, and, uh, uh, what is it called? You, YouTube and what have you. No, 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 no. It's a miracle. Miracle ministry. So, miracle will make you relevant. Amen. Yes, will make you relevant. Will make you relevant. Yeah. That's why you see the highest in society, they visit these prophets. Yes. They will show them a room, a place to sit. Remove your shoes. Do this, do this, do this. Sit here. Yeah, kneel down. Do this. Remove your shoe. Do this. They will do so many things. Yes. Miracle. And you see the greatest so-called what not in society all bowing down to those things because they, they, you see, every human being is limited in what he can do and what he can achieve with his strength. And you reach that point very quickly. And you realize that your relevance is because you have something to offer. Look at that verse again. Mark 1 and verse 28. Mark 1 and verse 28. It said, yeah, his fame spread abroad immediately. His fame spread. This is chapter 1 of his ministry. Your chapter 1 will be glorious. Your chapter one will be glorious in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Beautiful. Now, number five, the miracle anointing will draw captive souls. Amen will draw captive souls. Remember, he is sent, amen, to, he is sent to set the captives free. Amen. He is sent to set the captives free. So, captives will be set free. Amen. Now, what is captivity? Captivity. Captivity is where you cannot get away from something. One of the commonest things in the world today is things that people cannot stop. The world is filled with broken-hearted people which don't have a real solution. It's filled with captives who don't really have a way, and even we don't really have a way that they can come out. There are people who are drug addicts. They cannot stop. We addicts, smoking, if you smoke every day, you become addicted to it. Something that kills. Kill, smoking kills one third of everybody who uses it. One, two, three. 
One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Dead. One, two, three. Dead. One, two, three. Dead. One, two, three. Dead. Lung cancer. And yet, many people cannot stop it. People watch pornography, they cannot stop it. People fornicate, they cannot stop it. People are homosexual, they cannot stop it. People smoke, they cannot stop. Drinking, they cannot stop. Captives stealing, they cannot stop. Captives at every type of captivity is very common. So when you are a minister, you are standing before a sea of captives and a sea of broken-hearted people. Yeah, and that's why Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to heal the broken-hearted, not to teach them, not to teach the broken-hearted, to heal the broken-hearted. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> to set the captives free, not to teach the captives. Uh, he, was not there, he was not there to teach captives. He was to deliverance, bringing deliverance, preaching deliverance to captives, to heal the broken-hearted, to recover the sight of the blind. Yeah. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. So, your ministry changes level. You must have a fascination for the miraculous. You must be fascinated by the miraculous. Yes, you must be fascinated by the miraculous. It must be something you love and something you like and something you are attracted to. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mimo, I will not lie to you. My favorite people are prophets. Oh, yes. I will not lie to you. Like Kenneth Hagin. It's, I mean, those type of people. And when you go to, you get a chance to go to the library of the museum, you see that that part of the museum is quite fantastic. Yes. Oh, yes. That's why when I see them doing all the things, I say, Lord, don't leave me out of these things. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. I see a sea of captives coming to your life. Amen. Amen. I remember one guy. It was one of the first times I saw a captivity ending. He was either a smoker or a drinker. I think it was a smoke, smoking. He could not stop smoking. I took him to Legon Gardens in those days. And I prayed with him in the gardens. Just me him and I laid hands on him and be free of smoke. That was, he never smoked again. Mm. Yes, he never smoked again. Wow. Yeah. Captivity. Yes. He never smoked again. Years after, as he, he has stopped smoking, never again. A captivity was broken. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You stand there with Power. Where is your miracle service? I want to ask, where is your miracle service? Yes. Where is your miracle service? Uh-huh. Where is your day of outlet of miracle power? Yes. Where is your outlet for miracle? Because if you don't let it flow, a, a disease, a new disease will develop in you. Yes. Yeah. Are you reduced to a speaker? Are you reduced to a, a, you know, you've come, you've come to minister with a laptop and a PowerPoint. Instead of miracles, you have PowerPoint presentation and laptop. Eh? This is what you have. You are now, you now use laptop to preach with PowerPoint. Where are your miracles? You brought a laptop instead of miracles. <laughs> Illustrations and windows. Illustrations, windows, pictures, diagrams. Huh? What's the difference between you and a mathematician or some kind of seminar lecturer? What's the difference? Power is up coming out of you. There's power in you. Power to preach, power to heal, power to set free, power to answer. Kalama shatabaka satoma randala baba. 
Paromandala masito la baka balanda reda. Pe makasota te la mandala bari mandelebele. In the name of Jesus. Number seven, miracles, miracle anointing will promote the kingdom of God. Yes, when you go forth, your miracle anointing will promote the kingdom of God. Miracle. It says, and Luke chapter 10 and verse 8. Luke chapter 10. Verse 8, into whatsoever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. First of all, you eat. Then number two, you heal. Look at it. No fasting. You, you eat. Then verse 9, you heal the sick that are therein. <laughs> and say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. May you be a promoter of the kingdom of God. A promoter of the kingdom of God through miracles, anointing, manifestations, signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus. It's happening practically. It's happening practically. It's happening practically. You will be known as a miracle man. You'll 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 be known as a miracle man. They will say the miracle man is here. 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 Receive the miracle anointing. Receive the grace to be a miracle minister. Receive manifestations, demonstrations of the power of the Holy Ghost, of the anointing. Mataka palosha mandala basandala mandaka barandala baba. Yes. Number eight. Miracles of the spirit manifestations will release joy. A joy that has been missing from your ministry. A new joy is going to be released in your ministry. In Luke chapter 10 and verse 37, it says, And the 70 returned again with joy they return again with joy saying lord even the devils are subject unto us through your name there will be joy there will be joy receive joy receive joy receive joy Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. You know, miracles bring a lot of joy. Many nights after crusades in the night, we sit down and discuss the miracles. Many nights, night after night, we sit down sometimes when we are eating after crusades and we'll be discussing some of the amazing miracles that we saw. And there's joy. There's more miracle. There's more joy. More miracle. There's more joy. Yeah. God is tired of your Facebook and your YouTube and all your PowerPoint and your laptop. He's looking for miracle power. God is tired of all these uh, technology things without power and just using technology and ideas. Receive grace to walk in miracle power, miracle anointing and miracle grace. In the name of Jesus. Yes. 
Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I remember many times, many villages, many towns after crusades we will be sitting down and discussing. You remember this one and that one and what happened here, this one and that one. It, it, just, it just brings joy. The Bible says the 70 return with joy. Look at your church. You have made yourself like a, sem- a seminar. I don't know whether you are a lecturer or trying to be a professor from California. Huh? PowerPoint without power. Are you a lecturer or you are a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ? You know, one time I, I was uh, I preached and I wanted to remain as a seminar, uh, seminar man. Yeah. Because it's quite safe. You preach and the people listen and that's it. But now the Holy Spirit was taking me further. And it was like, no, you have to pray for the sick. And that one night, you know, about 24 people came to church. So I said, well, these are just a few people. I finished preaching. I started. Oh, God. We are closing. Then I heard the Holy Spirit say, pray for the sick. I said, you must be joking. <laughs> there are only 24 people here tonight. There's no sick. Nobody looks sick here. There's no sick person here. All is well, All is well here. And the Holy Spirit said, pray for the sick. And I said, in pray. I will, not, I will not pray for any sick because you want to disgrace me. I've preached a nice sermon. Everything is ending. All is well. That ends well. It's ending well. Now you want to embarrass me. Then I heard the Holy Spirit say, pray for the sick or I will kill you. Yes. And I said, everybody put your hand where your sickness is right now. Put your hand up where your sickness is. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. All the 24 people put their hand out where the sickness was. Because everybody's got a problem. Yeah. And I prayed for them. And I said, I became, I abandoned myself to the Holy Spirit because I said, you know, I don't want to quarrel with the Holy Spirit at church. <laughs> so I just do what he wants. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, heal them. Jesus' name. Amen. I said, look, if, if you are you, if you are you, lift up your hand. And somebody in the corner lifted a hand. One person. So I said, no, no, wait. I said, oh, wonderful. Come. What is it? So when the person came out, I was waiting to see, hear and say that. My head was paining me. My stomach was paining, but it has gone. So I said, what was that? He said, oh, I was blind. I said I was blind in this eye. Wait. I said I was blind in this eye. Yes. When you prayed, the eye opened. Stand in the corner. 24 people. Your miracle power ministry is born tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 There was joy. There was joy. You can't easily forget that. Number 11. The miracle ministry will cause you to see the glory of God in every aspect of your ministry. And Jesus said unto her, Said not I unto thee, that if thou shouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Thou shouldest see what? The glory 
of God. Amen. The glory of God was the raising of Lazarus that was just about to happen. If God is sending you to Vietnam, to Thailand, to India, to Japan, everywhere you are going, they have gods. They have gods before you came. Yes? They have gods and they have things that they believe before you, you, you are coming. They are not in need of new, a new school. New lecturers. <laughs> uh, they are not in need of all that. They are in need of supernatural answers. Healings. Yes. Supernatural answers. Yeah. So glory comes into your ministry. Glory. Glory means beauty. Glory is from the word doxa. It means something nice. Your ministry becomes nicer. Your shepherding ministry becomes nicer. Your teaching ministry becomes nicer. It becomes more beautiful. More beautiful girls have more chances of getting married. Yes, it's a fact. More beautiful girls, more outstanding girls, they have more chances of being married and more proposals. Yes. And when your, your ministry has doxa and glory, you have more proposals, more invitations, more beauty to your shepherding, more glory to your teaching, more glory to your pastoral, more glory to all the things that you are doing. More glory. Glory. Glorious. Glorious. I cannot deny that ministries that have, whether teaching or shepherding, is, is nice. But Jesus took, spoke about glory. He said, glory. Did I not tell you that if you believe, a certain glory will come on your ministry? A certain glory will come. Did I not tell you that if you believe, a certain glory, oh, 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 <laughs> you, you will see the glory of God. The beauty of God himself. Not the beauty of man's effort or man's computers or man's Facebook. But the glory, the beauty of God will come on your life and your ministry. Yes. And that comes through the miracle anointing. And you know, A. Allen, he wrote down about 12 points that to have a miracle ministry Everybody needs to have these 12 things. Yes, that he said, to have a miracle ministry, you need to do these 12 things. Is that not so, Professor? Yes. And he said, you have to have this, have this, have this, have that. And it's like there are things that are needed for the miracle ministry. Uh, the anointing does not mix. You know, the Bible says you cannot pour the oil on flesh. And so you see that you are forced to purify your life and cleanse your life of wickedness so that the oil can rest on you and the miracle power, what comes from God, can be on your life. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Benny Hinn said the price of glory is the same. It's the same. Whether it's me going to buy glory. It, you see, if I go to buy uh, a shirt and when I'm buying it, they charge me 1,000 CDs. But when you are going, they just charge you 10 CDs. You see, then it's not fair. So if Benihin is going to buy glory and it costs him so much, when you are also going for glory, why do you want, when you are going, they shouldn't ask for all those things that they ask him. And when Catherine Kuma was going for glory, it cost her her marriage, it cost her life, it cost this, it cost that. That's what she paid to get glory. You, when you are going to get glory, you don't want to give all those things. Yeah. So actually aiming for the miracle ministry is aiming for a certain glory and a certain beauty. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. And I believe that this glory and beauty is coming on your ministry. Amen. 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 You know, the first time I 
ever had a miracle in my ministry was in my friend Bishop Moses Sono's church in South Africa. That was the first time I ever saw a miracle that I had been invited somewhere to, to speak. The first time I ever dared to try to pray for the sick was in that church. Yeah. So where to? Yeah. I remember I had been there before, but when I went there, I was determined that no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, I knew that I was a speaker, but I said, no matter what, no matter what, I will pray, I will pray for the sick. Yeah. Because I'm moving out of this realm of just being a speaker and a teacher. Yeah. And that was where I saw many things that I have not seen before. But I think one of the interesting ones is it brings joy. You know, when I finished praying for the sick, we finished, and I was standing outside, you know, not near the church, I was standing on the car park somewhere. Then a lady came to me. I was wondering, what is the lady coming? She came to me. Uh, she was holding a child. And uh, she said, I, can I, I, I want to talk to her. I said, what is it? Because I wasn't sure. It was my first time. What is it? She said, you prayed for my child yesterday. You know, my child had uh, only one testicle. You laid hands on the child. And after I opened, and the second one has appeared there. So now there are two. So I, I came to tell you on the car park, this is what has happened. Yeah, it happened right there. Right there. Fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Many different miracles. But you see, it, it, even though, and I remember, don't, 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 when I talk of glory, I'm talking of there's something that when Jesus said, you see glory. Because I remember I was in his church and I, pre, I preached about Anakazo. I remember the response. When I preached about Anakazo, the church stood up and clapped and clapped and clapped and clapped. I don't remember preaching about Anakazo where uh, people have clapped so much. So I'm not saying that my teaching ministry wasn't working. Oh no, it was working. I, I was teaching, it was very nice. Oh yes. But there's a certain glory that came to add eh, to the teaching. Your ministry is being amplified. Your ministry is going higher. Your ministry is going deeper. I am asking you right now, where is your outlet? Where is your outlet? Where is your outlet? Your outlet of miracles. Yes. I question whether you are a genuine minister if there's no miracle dimension to your pastoral work. Yes. You know why God rejected Moses? You know, at the very end of his ministry because he was tired of doing miracles. Yes. He was tired of doing miracles. Yes. He was tired of miracles because God told him speak to the rock. And he said, no. <laughs> it was uh, speaking to the rock at this time. These guys, I mean, these guys, they have criticized me all my life, my ministry, everything I do, they have something to say. And he, he, he said, speak to the rock, all right? And uh, this is how you are going to do it. But he, instead, he took a rod and he struck it. You see. Now, you will notice when God spoke about this thing. He said, you did not honor me. You did not honor me at this place. You see. You did not honor me. You know. Yeah. You did not sanctify me yes, before the people. Yes. He says, you did not sanctify me in the eyes of the children. Therefore, you shall not bring this. Or if you like, forget about the big, big words that have been used. 
just summarize it because you didn't do miracles. You didn't do miracles. So you are not going to the promised land. That's all. If you, I don't, I don't understand what is sanctify me. I don't understand this. I don't understand all that. I said, you didn't do miracles. And you are not going to the promised land. Yeah. Yeah. You refuse to do miracles. You were tired of the stress of miracles. Miracles are stressful. <laughs> My very first miracle service, it was Archbishop Big Daddy who was there. When I finished, I came to sit down on the stairs and he came to sit by me on the steps in Polygon. And he said, it was, it was a good service, but it was very stressful. <laughs> The tension was too much. That was the first ever miracle service I've ever conducted in my whole life. He said the tension was too much in the service. And it's true. It brings tension. Yeah. But you see, it brings glory as well. It brings obedience to God. And it seems to do something to God. Because it's not you leave yourself and you have to trust God. Yes. So you're talking and your things don't work anymore. It's what God can do. That's why it is the glory of God. The glory of God. The glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you going to walk in a miracle ministry? Yes. Yeah, you don't have a choice. Now your Facebook may not work the way it was working before. Yeah, I hear they have even changed their name. Yeah. Change their name. Hmm? May not work in the same way. May not be this and that. Yeah. But the miracle ministry. Yeah. You know, when I started to listen to Yongi Cho, he had a sermon called Church Growth and Miracles. Yeah, Church Growth and Miracles that without miracles, you, the church cannot grow. Yeah. You need miracles. People need to walk in miracles. The miraculous. Lift your hands and thank God for miracle ministry. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mando sas para la nasha. Marende le mosanda la manda le dele. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Mal mash and mas and mala asma ash amas amas amanda masamadasha. Mahala marambale ne baranama sombe trebesh meridos randal meneketa shamandalida. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Thanks a million. Thanks a million. Ye mando somona nana ne de de. You may be seated. Now I, I'm praying that by now the dove has settled on your chest. The dove, the gift of miracles settled on your chest. Now, how to move into miracle anointing? How to move into it? Very quickly before we close tonight. Number one, you will move into the miracle ministry by believing that your ministry is validated by miracles and manifestations. You must believe it. Acts 2.22. You must believe that your ministry has not been validated. Validated means approved. Approved by miracles. Acts 2.22. It says, you men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles. 
approved what? Approved of God amongst you by miracles. You have to believe that your teaching ministry, your pastoral ministry, your apostolic ministry, your prophetic ministry, your evangelistic ministry is approved by God. How? It's approved by miracles. It's approved by signs. It's approved by wonders. And not only miracles, wonders and signs. Like I said, when Bishop Oedipus' handbell came out and then the handbell started speaking in tongues, the, the picture, that's a wonder. That's a wonder. It's a sign. It's a wonder. <laughs> Beautiful. Every one of you should be saying to you, asking yourself, I am, am I approved? Am I approved? And, and how are you approved? That's Acts 2.22. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Yeah. You are approved by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you. You are approved, which God did by him in the midst of you. Ask you yourself, no. No one is approved except the signs and wonders. Yes. Unless we want to change our Bible. Are you one of those who want us to remove some parts from the Bible? Yeah. Have faith in the miraculous. Desire. Do you know how I have fasted and prayed just for miracles? Yeah. How I've gone to wait on God just I want a miracle ministry. Yes. How much I desire miracles because I believe that I am not validated or approved unless these miracles are part of my life and part of my ministry. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I've learned that it is truly something by which your ministry is approved. By God. Your ministry is not approved by the amount of offering you receive. That's not a sign of the approval. It has never been a sign of approval. By how much money you had. But it's what is used to approve your ministry is miracles, signs, and wonders. And I can assure you that you'll never get miracles, signs, and wonders out of God unless you also do certain things. It won't come. It won't come. You may say whatever, but it won't happen. Oh, yes. That's why we shy away from it. That's why Moses was like, it's like he was so angry. You know, sometimes when you're angry, you cannot uh, operate in a miracle anointing because the feeling of anger doesn't go with miracle feeling. So if you shout at the people, hey, no, 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 then you go, okay, I am the Lord that he led. It doesn't go with it. And Moses was bored with the people. And then suddenly he was supposed to do a miracle and speak to the rock. And it wasn't working that way. So approval of your ministry is by miracles, signs, and wonders. And it doesn't happen everywhere. One day we went to a town in Ghana. And after the crusade, we had a pastor's conference in the Catholic church. A number of Catholic churches allow us to welcome us to have uh, programs in their church. But this was a nice Catholic church. So we, I finished preaching. After I finished, a, a man, an elderly man came and said to me, I want to tell you something because I think you should know. He said that the miracles that you are experiencing here eh, in this town, I want you to know that it's not natural. It is a wonder. And he said, because I was here in this town when an evangelist came here and said that he was doing miracles he preached and he was doing miracles. And when he prayed and to do the miracles, nothing happened. And the people, <laughs> the people in the town 
took stones. I'm talking about a town in Ghana. They took stones to stone the pastor who had come, the evangelist who had come to do miracles. And then he said that then the pastor, the evangelist also cursed them or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. So you see, <laughs> it's not always that miracles happen. Yeah. You think that, oh, once there's a lot of people, somebody will come and testify. Yes. Once there's a lot of people, somebody will come and testify. Yeah. But it's not like that. It's not like that. It's, it's actually an approval from God. Yes. It's an approval from God. God says, I approve of you. That's why I'm letting these miracles and signs and wonders take place in your life and ministry. Amen. So, the mystery of incorporating miracles into a pastor's life, into a shepherd's life, into a teacher's life, into a prophet's life, that mystery, do you see, must take place, yes, in your life. God is showing you right now how to do it. Amen. And the first is that in your mind, you must always feel and think that it is the way God approves of me in the ministry. Number two, you enter the miracle ministry by believing that you cannot do without miracles as a Bible man. If you cut out the miracles from the Bible, you'll be left with very little. So every Bible-based minister is a miracle-based minister. You cannot be Bible-based without being miracle-based. Yes. You cannot be Bible-based without being miracle-based. Yes. You know, one day I read a, 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 a little story about uh, Moses. And uh, in this story, Moses, uh, Pharaoh had another dream, apart from the dreams you know about. Yes, he had another dream. And in the dream, he saw an, a man standing in front of him who was uh, something like a businessman. Pharaoh saw him standing in front of him. You see, and I'm saying this to challenge you. Those of you who don't be, it's like you think, oh, it couldn't be. Oh, what are these stories? Why? Why not? And he saw this businessman, something like a businessman or a merchant man, standing in front of him with scales, where you weigh this and you weigh this. And the man was standing in front of Pharaoh. Then, on the left side, people came to fill the pan on the left side. All the people in Egypt, the elders, the nobles, the military, everybody, they came to stand inside the left pan. And it went down. Then, a baby was put in the right pan. And the baby was heavier than all the people <laughs> that were in the left side. You get what I'm saying? And Balaam was there. Balaam was there. And he was asking for interpretation of the dream. What is the interpretation that a baby is heavier than all these people? And he told him that there is a baby that will be born to these people. That will be more than all the people in Egypt. All the elders. And that baby was most. And that was what initiated them to start to kill the babies. Yes. So they decided to kill the babies. It was based on that dream. Why, why 
why, why can it not be true? Because uh, the other dream that Moses had, uh, Pharaoh had when he saw seven lean cows. What about that dream? It, the whole Bible is based on these stories. Your rejection of supernatural things, your rejection of power, and your rejection, your rejection of displays of glory is a sign that you not only reject something small like it, but you are rejecting all miraculous things. Yeah. You must move away from rejecting the miraculous and the supernatural and rather see it as something that is a sign of approval from God. The release of beauty and glory on your ministry. Yeah. So the miracle anointing and the miracle ministry is flowing into your life. Amen. Are you listening to me? Bible based. The Bible is a miraculous book. Cut out miraculous things, supernatural things. You are left with nothing. You must accept that once I've taken my mind to believe the Bible, that is it. In the Bible, snakes talk to human beings. Yes? Huh? In the Bible, horses fly. Hmm? I say in the Bible that we have horses fly. Chariots come from heaven for, to collect passengers. Yes? The book you are holding that you say is what you believe in. Fishes swallow human beings and human beings stay underground, underwater for some days. <laughs> yeah. The Bible you are reading. You say you are, I'm a Bible man. I'm a biblically based minister. And I'm telling you that you are Bible based. There is no more supernatural and unusual book than the Bible. We're full of miraculous stories. Miraculous stories. Yes, in, in the Bible. See, the sea can just open up. You walk through. Yeah. And you know, I tell you, I was reading something was saying the animals that came to Egypt. It wasn't just locusts. Locusts, beetles, I mean, snakes, every, and all the whole country was filled with animals. Oh, yes. The whole country was filled with animals. They drink water and frogs jump in the stomach. They were all in the water. It was fantastic. I wonder why you would even reject something like that. You realize for so long you have believed snake talks to human beings. Waters come and your boat come. The whole world is flooded. One man and he's able to take all animals on the ship and stay with them. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's a supernatural book. Anybody here who says it's a Bible man. Yeah. Now, when Noah was in the ark, you know, imagine that Noah would just be in the ark and rain is coming and the whole world would be saying, I read a book which was saying that 700,000 people surrounded the ark. Oh yeah, they were trying to break in. Before the Lord lifted it up in the waters. And as they were, as the thing was moving out, the water was turning up and down. All the animals were shouting. You would not expect the animals to be quiet. Everybody was saying, whoo, whoo, ah, why, 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 the whoo, every animal was afraid. <laughs> and they were all inside. These are what we believe. I'm surprised that you are struggling with miraculous things, miraculous visions, dreams, supernatural power. No struggle from today. No struggle from today. You are a miracle. I see the word is written like that. The miracle man. 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 Receive that grace. Yeah. 
Amen. Number three, you move into miracle ministry by turning away from those who deny power, miracles, and manifestations. Turn away. Second Timothy chapter three and verse five. That people who are all these bad things, but denying the power, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Amen. From such, turn away. Turn away from anyone. That's what I'm trying to say. Anybody who is somewhere about the miraculous, move away from them. People who make fun. Yeah. You know, one time I took some visitors to the uh, the library of the anointing. They were impressed with John Wesley, Charles Wesley, William Booth, and all those other historical people. When they got to the miraculous part, I said, hmm, are you sure? Are you sure that somebody ever, there was miracle, there was this, there was that? You know, from such turn away. Yeah, from such turn away. From today, eh? You are going to be known as a miracle. When you go out witnessing, you're going to pray for people and bless them and help them, touch them, lay hands on them, minister to them. Tell them, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. God will touch you. God will heal you. God will change everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive your miracle ministry. Receive your miracle ministry. Receive your miracle ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Number four, you will walk in your miracle ministry by following the example of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is our great example. Yeah. And after he prayed and fasted and he entered into the miracle ministry, he is our great example. He is our great example of miracles. Your life is a life to follow Jesus, your great example. Anyone who is interested in miracles must be interested in Jesus. Jesus came to heal the sick and do wonders in your life and in my life. Amen. You are walking in the New Testament anointing. Amen. You are walking in Jesus' power. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1 and 2. It says that unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. You must move into a New Testament ministry, a biblical ministry, a Jesus ministry. When Jesus came down, amen, great multitudes came and followed him. And they came to hear him and to be healed. They came to hear him and to be healed. He sent his word and healed them. In Luke six seventeen, the Bible tells us that he came and the people came to hear him and to be healed. So he was a speaker, but he was a speaker who healed their diseases. Look at the beautiful scripture. Luke 6, 17. So from today, people will come to hear you and to be healed. They will come to, not just to hear you, to hear you and to be healed. There, there are several references to this particular scripture. They came to hear him and to be, I always remember Kenneth Hagin, he kept on emphasizing, you hear the person first and then you are healed. Yeah. To hear him and to be healed. To hear him and to be healed. At this meeting, you are being transformed, being translated, being promoted, being changed into a miracle person. Why? Because you are a New Testament minister. You are a Bible minister. You are fulfilling 
the prophecies of Malachi chapter 4, that unto you that believe in him shall come the son of righteousness with healing in his wings. Remember that it is only Jesus, only Jesus, who had a miracle ministry, the whole Bible. Yes. Isaiah, no miracle ministry. Elijah, no miracle ministry. Jeremiah, no miracle ministry. Habakkuk, no miracle ministry. Haggai, no miracle ministry. Ezekiel, no miracle ministry. Joshua, no healing ministry. Moses, no healing ministry. All these people had no healing ministry. But Malachi prophesied that, the, and this was the last chapter of the Old Testament, he prophesied that somebody is coming. Someone is coming. Someone is coming. Somebody is coming. Somebody, 400 years before Jesus came on the scene, he prophesied that unto you that fear my name, the son of righteousness shall appear with healing in his wings. Amen. You know, when I look at the stars in the sky, the stars, not the sun, not the planets. Some of the planets are so big, the stars. If you are to cross with a plane on a star, some of the big stars like uh, Regal or Betelgeuse, Aldebaran, you would take 1,200 years in a plane flying at top speed, British Airways. It would take you 1,200 years to cross the surface of the, the, the star. That's how big a star is. Yes. It's unbelievable. I suspect, I don't know, but I suspect that some of the stars we see are actually either angels And supernatural beings. Because there's no, some of them are as far as 17,000, 37,000 light years away. That means that the light you are seeing happened 37,000 years ago. And it's now that it, it's reached your eyes. Yes, 37,000 years ago. Yes. Yeah. It's, 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 when you say something is 20 light years away or 700 light years away, it means that it happened 700 years ago and it has taken 700 years for the light to reach you. So when you see a light from a star, which is 700 light years away, it means that it happened in 20, uh, 700 years. That would be what? Uh, 1321, something like that. 1321. That was when the flash happened that you are now seeing it. You see, it's have 700 years that the light has traveled our eyes, now reached earth. That's the flash you just saw. Yeah. And there are some stars which are 37,000 light years away. And it's true because the calculations are true because that's the calculation that they used to send a rocket. That when they, they calculate it, it takes six months and it gets there in six months. Yeah. So all the calculations are correct. And the size of the stars and everything is all correct. It's, it's fantastic. So this scripture, and I'm ending on this note. It says the son of righteousness. Maybe, and you see, there is a star called Stevenson 218. Stevenson 218. Yes. It is considered the biggest star in the universe. 10 billion suns can fit into Stevenson 218. 10 billion suns. Our sun, which is 1,000 times bigger than this earth. The sun is 1,000 times bigger than the earth. And Jupiter is also 1,000 big times bigger than the earth. The sun is 1,000 bigger, big, bigger times bigger than the earth. And this star, Stevenson 218, 10 billion suns, the sun, can fit into it. God made the sun, the moon, and the stars. 
We don't even know who we are worshipping. We don't even know how great he is. That's why he just looks at us as orangus, hopeless orangus who are just, I mean, struggling to understand him. Stevenson 2.18. Maybe that Stevenson 2.18 is even Jesus, what they are even seeing. Yes. Because maybe from there he looks like a star. I don't know. But that's why he says that, and to you that fear my name, shall the sun not the s-o-n the s-u-n son of righteousness yes arise with healing in his wings tonight i saw saturn outside venus is there saturn is there and i think mars is also there amazing but far are the stars so beautiful Remember when the devil rebelled? He says one third of the stars they were taken out. Yes. He took, he took the stars, one third. But these are fallen angels. With his tail, took the stars. Yeah. Another time. The scripture says, I saw an angel standing in the sun. The sun is nuclear power. Yes. Yeah. Nuclear power. I saw an angel standing in it. We don't even know what we are worshiping. We are, we are nothing. We are nothing. That's why Jesus said, heaven, yeah, heaven and earth. No, an angel standing in the sun, the sun. Yeah, amazing. That's why Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will not pass away. It's not a small statement. Yes. And to you who fear my name. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful scripture. I saw an angel standing in the sun. Yeah. <laughs> it was standing inside the sun. Nuclear power. Beyond, even the sun, you should never look at it with your eyes because it can bend your eye and your eye will be blind. So far away it is from this earth, 93 million miles. 93 million miles. And it can bend your eye to be blind. But there are angels that can stand inside the sun. Yeah. And there is a star. So when you when you when you go from F backwards towards Saturn, Jupiter, beyond, and you look at the sun, it turns into a star. And the sun is just a star. Our sun is a star. It's only from here it looks big because we are so near. But when you go back, it turns into a star. You just keep going and it becomes very tall, like a dot. It's one of the stars. Yeah, it's one of the stars. Yeah. <laughs> and God eh, describes somebody who is a son of righteousness with healing in his wings. That's why when they were killing him on the cross, he just turned and said, forgive them. Forgive them. They know not what they do. We are, we are some will. Kneel down and ask God to forgive us for wickedness. Wickedness. We are, we are some way. Father, forgive us. We are evil. We are evil. We are evil. Have mercy. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord. The name of Jesus, have mercy on us. Wash us with your blood. Have mercy. In Jesus' name. Amen. I suspect that this son of righteousness, huh? With healing in his wings. Maybe out there. We don't even know.
and that power. There's so much power. Yeah, so much power. So much power. And we come in the name of the Lord and in the name of Jesus. And that's the power that you are carrying. And it is that power that God is telling you, I am sending you forth as a healer and a minister of my power and of my healing and of my love. May you walk in that great grace, great anointing of a healing ministry, power, excellence. May the grace of God that brings salvation and power and healing be upon your life. May the son of righteousness who has healing power in his wings appear to you and empower you tonight to walk in grace and miracle power. May your ministry be amplified by the son of righteousness. The son of righteousness. The son of righteousness. With healing in his wings. May this blessing be upon everyone that is so called here a servant of God and a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you thanks. That there shall be no man here without oil on his head. Lay your hands on your head. Lord, let no head here lack oil, lack ointment, lack grace, lack power. Let no one here lack that beautiful power that comes from the son of righteousness with healing in his wings. Release power ministries and miracle ministries, anointed servants, anointed preachers, anointed leaders, miracle men. Let the word, the miracle man, Ratas Marandola Mashandada, be mentioned over your servants who are standing here tonight. I thank you that no more shall people be called speakers at programs, but they shall be called the miracle man has come tonight. Tonight the miracle man is here. Dryness is taken away. Emptiness is taken away. And the grace of God has appeared to all. Thank you. Thank you. I give you thanks. I thank you for the stars and the sun and the moon and the celestial bodies. For there is one glory of the moon and another glory of the planets and another glory of the stars and one star different from another in glory. May the differing glories appear upon your children and upon your servants. May the different glories of the stars appear upon your servants. May power ministries, uh, limbs threatening ministries, Naharambo Sambahalaja, glory and glory, one different from another in glory. May glory appear, differing glories, differing glories, differing glories appear upon your servants, appear upon your evangelists, appear upon your pastors, appear upon your servants, differing glories. Rasa Malosha, Pasombada Masa, Talamakala. Oh Lord, to them that fear your name, appear as a sun, as a star, with a different glory, a different doxa upon your servant. Let it come now, let it come now. Oh, my Shabbat, for there is one glory of the moon, one glory of the sun, one glory of the stars. Uh, each star differing in glory. Therefore, let differing glories uh, appear upon your children. Rahama, Sando, Masamba, Mashomba, Malebriste, Makalba, Haloma Nandala, Mado Satipala. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thanks. Thanks. 
thanks for a fulfillment of this prophecy in the lives of your people healing of gynecological diseases healing of mental diseases healing of broken bones healing of cancers healing of eye conditions healing of paralysis healings of all kinds setting free of captives setting free of the broken hearted releasing of captives from captivity thank you that this is happening practically we give you glory lord we give you praise in the mighty name of jesus thank you for this blessedness as my father sent me so send i you receive this commission from jesus that as the father sent jesus so also you are sent now sent with miracles sent with prayers sent with answers sent with release of captives and deliverance of many from captivity in the name of jesus christ of nazareth give god glory and give god praise be seated well thank God for another time take out the glory anointing I feel different glories and different powers are released to many different ones manas pahadala shamonda semendeleke man bespele noma baran san balama you know, when God releases something precious, everyone must release something precious. Tonight, I, I don't have envelopes. I don't know if you have envelopes here. Do we have any envelopes? Ah. I want some people who are going to say, want to support this campaign with a thousand of something anything thousand dollars thousand cities thousand to support this program tonight come for this envelope be blessed now help me to give receive the envelope come and take and so a special I see the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 about the stars differing in glory God is going to give different glories to you in your ministry and sow your special seed come maybe you are watching online can also um, sow a special seed online. There are more than 100 extra people who need to give uh, through this envelope. More than 100. Yeah. You know, I was thinking to myself that maybe all that I've been preaching about, maybe some of us don't yet understand the preciousness of the gift of God and how you need to honor it in order to see a certain glory in your life. Yeah. So, let the Holy Spirit touch your life and be someone who walks in the spirit. You know, you know this God is very sensitive. Somebody once told me you are sensitive. <laughs> God is very sensitive, more than you can imagine. He notices respect. And he notices different little things. You don't have a thousand, but you want to give 500 CDs. 
just come for the envelope from here because I feel the presence of God here and that is why I need assistance come and take your envelope to sow a special seed and be blessed by the way this offering that I'm taking I felt the Holy Spirit leading me to take it this particular offering I wasn't going to take it actually and then I felt prompted by the Lord yes so it's a blessing it's a blessing I'm going to sow a special seed of 500 CDs towards this conference towards whatever you think you are sowing towards it's your faith it's a blessing to you. Father, thanks. Thanks. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you glory. Mambalmash almas paranalande. Salmo macalbano parmili alados maderede. Differing glories are being administered. Differing glories. Manda do boronale des moj en venire. Borede. There is one glory of the sun and there is another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another. Star in glory. <laughs> one star differs from another star in glory. Stevenson 218 Aldebaran Betelgeuse Regal these are some of the famous stars yes one star differed from another star in glory yeah yeah look at it put it on the screen your ministry will differ from another ministry in glory. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. And to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise. The sun, the sun, the star shall arise with healing in his way. You who fear my name. You don't have a 500. This envelope is for tomorrow. If you have it tonight, you can bring it. But tomorrow, bring it. And tonight, you can bring. You can put it straight away in the envelope, in the basket. Yes. Now, you don't have a, uh, what is it called? 500 CDs. But you have 200 CDs or 100 come for the envelope. This is the last one. 200 cities. So this is a special AD conference and special grace. You have 200 cities or 100 cities. Randas Marhaldos Ishalbo Uzbanaria Merimu. You can bring it tomorrow or if you have it even tonight. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. O Mahabalo, Amaro, Palazzo, Barado, Zamara, De Bere, De Besule, Marende, Laramando, Berenilo, Ramanda, Lembregele, Geste, Brande, Boromone, Laramado, Lido, Go, Galagadego, the Guinea, Bellana, Bobadi, Bellari, the Busi, Calibur, 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 the Chicane, Baracabano, the Bacabari, the Vedicabari, the Bacabari, the Bacabari, the Bacabari, the Bacabari, the Prada la baroma di prende le bonabro padazime do bridi di banasbaro da banje le bene borbes bene che te bene one star differeth from another star in glory mano shahambara mana navara one ministry differeth from another ministry in glory 
glory is descending upon your ministry. Beauty, beauty is descending. There is one glory of the sun and there is another glory of the moon and then there is another glory of the stars for one star differeth from another star in glory my God differing glories are administered differing glories are administered Differing glories are administered. Differing glories are administered. Differing glories are administered. Malbos, Balbosh, Evolon, Swigalan, Prevalen, Swadlem, Preglem, Pashme, Mosible, Planadure, Nenkromson, Shimrekesin, Somesomanan, Shimlemunusasi, Shimlisabusamul, Simachine Malisu, Shimlisam Sumashina, Behendas Mara. Bossi get a parada basube chile banda barada, shove si de le bosa mosa de le shibana mama, mata ke bele somana ne banda ne batisa bara, hore da basa bara hada la mara shibode, pade basa bara ketado, tode sakata padoshi de bere, bolo kita sam bolo taspare jere bas para dole de, made brana masonde tasse mandala mana kabasa de le, pabla de do proda la vidi si pade shibana na. Pare mane basonde para dasi mochi bana na mere sine bana ke barada prada la soberele tablo de brane pashu moleire 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 tasma hasmani lore peshino la vesi bore de bakabro de bolire pala nabres abole ne sham abrandes imolande. Madl, Madl, Madolen, Abros, Almo, Echiman, Esberilo, Logo, Dalane, Spelido, Taraba, Eborde, Tremson, and Speni, and Sponine, Tan, and Spolede, Terebene, Kabushin, Navasana. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Now, you don't have a hundred CDs or two hundred, but you have maybe something special you want to give. Come and take, when the envelopes are finished, we'll not give you any more. Envelope. But if you have anything special, you want to say, Lord, I don't have 100,000 what they are saying, but I have something special I want to give. Come and take one of the envelopes. Maybe you want to give foreign currency. Maybe you want to give whatever. When the envelopes are finished, that's it. We are not going to give any more envelopes. You bring it without an envelope. Get your own envelope. Beautiful. 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 One day when you do fundraising and you do offering, people will give because you, you gave when somebody was doing fundraising. Amen. Or offering was receiving offering. Oh yes, oh yes. Make sure your offering is greater than the price of the envelope. Is your offering bigger than the price of the envelope? Huh? You sure? Okay. Beautiful. Tomorrow is envelope night, and tomorrow night is also coins night. Amen. Tomorrow is envelope night and coins night. Envelope day in the morning, afternoon, and in the evening, coins night to crown it all with foreign currencies. Amen. God is going to bless you mightily as you support, to help. Most of the things are free. Books are free. This is free. That is free. Many things are free. It's a blessing for you. Also give an offering in Jesus' name. Everybody take out your offering right now. And um, all right, thank you, pastors. Take your offering and let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity to give an offering today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please come forward with whatever offering you have. The ladies are here with the bags. And uh, they are all beautiful ladies. If they are not married, just check the ring finger and you see that if they are not married or they're married. If they are not married, it's an opportunity for those who are seeking. All right? It's an indirect advertisement. Fantastic. Now, welcome whoever is coming up. 
uh, everybody, flow prayer meeting is at 4 a.m. Make sure you are part of flow prayer meeting. That is a great blessing for everyone here. All right? Yeah, Tommy, can I have one of you guys? Tommy, anybody, are you here? Rise your feet. Rise your feet. Let's appreciate the gift of God. Let's appreciate the gift of God. I cannot feel your appreciation. Keep on clapping. Keep on clapping. You will be appreciated one day. You are sowing a seed of appreciation. Go ahead. Go ahead. God bless you, Bishop. God bless you, Bishop. And let's appreciate the Lord. Go ahead and appreciate the Lord for such a gift. For such a gift. Thank you, Lord, for such a gift. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Keep on clapping. Add a shout unto the Lord to appreciate the Lord for such a wonderful gift. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How many of you are blessed? God has answered our prayer. How many of you remember that during the prayer time we're praying for the grace of God to help us? And God has answered our prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, uh, 4 a.m. is flow prayer time. And God willing, the next session will start tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. All right. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Amen. So God bless you. See you. Make sure you are part of the flow prayer meeting. That starts at 4 a.m. God bless you.